Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another video in the new studio. Today we're once again joined by the tech chap to discuss everything PC and if you're going to go out and buy a PC what sort of thing should you be looking at and what is the biggest bit of advice we can give to you about doing so. So we're joined by Tom on the line now. Hello Tom. Hey Marcus, how's it going? I'm very very well, thank you so much for asking. Now, I'm very much a PC gamer, specialising in all everything PC gaming, uh, but I believe you are a little bit different, are you not? Well, I do have a gaming PC. I've got a desktop under my desk, which uh, runs Windows 10. I do use it for gaming, but I also have a MacBook Pro, as you can see here, for getting some work done for uh, sort of video editing on the fly. So uh, I'm in the Mac and the Windows camp. Well, that's very good to hear. Hopefully we get a bit of differing advice. So without further ado, let's get started. Desktop or laptop? This is a question that a lot of people ask themselves on a daily basis and it's not always the thing that people get right. And it all comes down to whether you're going to fully utilise the platform that you're using. Do you want a desktop or should you be buying a laptop? Now desktops are fairly straightforward. They use desktop class components which are essentially higher power output components which utilise more power but thus you get better value for money because you get more performance at the same cost. If you're going to utilise a desktop fully, then you're probably going to want as much power as possible without the care of having something that's portable. Desktops are great, but there are loads of advantages getting a laptop. First and foremost, it has to be the portability. You can take them anywhere you want, whether you're watching a movie on the train, getting some work done on the plane. You can just shove it in your backpack, take it with you, unlike a desktop tower, which uh, you know usually weighs quite a lot and it's not exactly easy to move around. So portability really is the main advantage of getting a laptop. So it all comes down to whether you're actually going to utilise that portability factor of the laptop. You're paying more for the laptop and of course you're getting things like screen, keyboard, all included in that cost. Whereas if you've already got a setup at home and you want to get a new desktop, you're going to save yourself some money. But literally, if you want to know the answer to that question, I think it's really easy. Are you ever going to use the laptop for what it's intended to or is it just going to sit on your desk acting like a desktop? Common mistake number one, buy before you try. Don't buy before you try because you don't know exactly what you're getting and this is especially true of laptops where it might have a dodgy screen, it might feel a little bit tacky and ultimately it might not be what you expect it to be. Don't do this. What specification do I need? Whenever we're looking at computers it comes up with a load of numbers and a lot of people can get fairly confused to what they mean. Well, different components in your PC are going to do different things and it's important to buy the right components for what you're trying to use it for. If you just want to do a bit of web browsing, there's no point going out and spending a load of money on a computer that has a really powerful graphics card because you're not going to use it. But likewise, if you want to do some really high intensive editing, if you go out and you buy a 200 pound laptop, it's probably not going to be able to handle it. But when you're buying a desktop or a laptop, you should also look at the screen or the monitor you get for it. Depending on your budget, you can either get a fairly low end, what they call TN panel, which don't have the best viewing angles, or if you're willing to spend a bit more money or get a slightly higher level laptop, you can get an IPS display, which are a bit more color accurate. So it is definitely worth putting some time and money into getting a nice display for your laptop or your desktop. So no matter what your budget, make sure you do a little bit of research and basically get the right computer for you and that way you'll go home with something that you won't regret. Common mistake number two, spending on the wrong things. Now there's nothing wrong with spending money on a high-end processor, graphics card and power supply, but if you pair it with a HD ready TV from 2005 and use the internal speakers, it's not a great use of money. What parts do I prioritize? Very closely related to our last topic, if you're going for something that's very gamer centric, you're going to want to put a load of money into a graphics card because that's the main thing that's going to dictate how well your games run. But if you are someone that does a lot of video rendering, you're probably going to want to make sure you get something like an i7 Intel processor because those are very very good at video rendering. And it's all about what you're going to use your PC for now and later because I see so many people they think they know exactly what they're doing they do a lot of research and they buy a decent computer that serves them well for a small amount of time and when they want to go and upgrade it they find for whatever reason they're going to have to spend a load more money and have to get a new power supply to support two graphics cards if that's what they want to do or if you watched our G3 video that you can find in the little eye somewhere around here 
you end up buying a computer that voids your warranty as soon as you open it up and thus it puts you off expandability. But there is one major thing when you're buying a PC that you should look out for. SSD, you need a solid state drive. I can't recommend an SSD highly enough. It makes a night and day difference to the performance of your laptop or your PC. Boot times, opening applications, just generally using Windows is so much faster with an SSD. So regardless of what kind of spec PC or laptop you buy, whether it's got a high-end graphics card or an i7 processor, do try and make sure you can get an SSD. Or if you don't get one in it, you can always upgrade later. Common mistake number three, not thinking ahead. It's all very well planning a PC build, but if you're going to do it, it's gotta last you for a long time. So you don't wanna make silly mistakes that are going to haunt you later. So if you get an AMD graphics card and then you want to use the NVIDIA 3D Vision kit, you're out of luck. Do I build or buy my PC? This is a massive topic and one that has the builders at one end screaming, it's the best thing you can possibly do, are you mad? And then the other end saying, well I haven't actually done one before, I don't know what I'm doing, I'd rather get someone to build it for me. Which is the right way to go? Well it's very very simple and I think there are two sorts of people. There are the really techie people that quite like to do their own things and want to be able to build their own PC. And then there's the other people that they're just not really that fast and probably don't even think about building their own one. And from my point of view, I'm very much on the techie side of things that would always recommend that you build your own PC. But I'm very understanding that a lot of people don't want to do this for whatever reason. The main advantages to building your own is that you have complete control over the different components. You're probably gonna get it at a cheaper price. You're gonna learn a new skill. And another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that your warranty is probably gonna be longer because each warranty is on each different component rather than the system as a whole. And you can do as many upgrades or changes to it as you like without fear of voiding any warranties. But the main factor here is that if you're going to buy your own PC, it's going to save you a lot of time, at least because you don't need to build it yourself. Obviously shipping time and how long it takes them to build it is another story. Tom, I believe uh, you have built your own PC, have you not? Yeah, I built my own PC, which I'm pretty proud of, but I do understand that it's a bit of a daunting experience if it's your first time, but there are loads of great guides out there to get you comfortable with it, so it doesn't have to be this really difficult process. And you do save a lot of time and money, I think. I think money is the big save you, get, you make uh, by getting the individual components and putting it together yourself. So no matter what you're thinking at the moment, I'd always recommend you at least consider building your own PC. Now if you've never done it before, I've put together a series of three videos, if you can find those in the little eye over there, that go through step by step exactly how to do it. And I've tried to make this as clear as possible. But if you don't want to build your own PC, then that's really not too much of a problem. And there are some great places out there like Overclockers UK and Scan that will actually build your own PC, especially to order as well. Uh, so you can put whatever you like in it. You're just going to have to pay a little bit of a price premium to do so. So there we have it, our advice for PC buyers, or of course Mac buyers, uh, that want to go out and get a new PC. And hopefully this has helped you make the right decision when you're going out and buying one. Now, if you are interested in Macs, and you're also interested in PCs, and you want to know which one's better, then there is going to be a separate video on the Tech Chaps channel. Uh, so that's Tom's channel, and you can find that little eye over there. And Tom, I believe, is still probably hanging around, so we probably should say uh, goodbye to him. Uh, thank you so much, Tom, uh, for joining me in this video. Um, I hope it's been uh, really useful to everyone else, but it's been fantastic to have you on once again. Thank you very much, Marcus, for having me on PC Centric. I always enjoy talking about building PCs. Well, I always enjoy talking about them as well, hence why we've got our channels, I guess. So thank you so much to you guys for checking out this video, as always. Highly appreciated, and if you've enjoyed it please hit that like button and go over to Tom's channel so the tech chap and go and check out the video on there uh, he's got a load of great videos he's seeing some serious growth and there's got to be a reason behind that if you want to follow us on Twitter and ask any questions and you obviously can do that in the comments but if you do want to go to Twitter it's at PC centric for me and at the tech chap for Tom a massive thank you once again and a big thank you to Corsair as always for sponsoring this channel. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and let us know if you want to see more video collaborations like this one. A massive thank you once again and I'll see you in the next one. I put together a series of videos, I make them myself. Because <laughs> I'm awesome. Me, me, me.